Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're taking a look at the ASUS RTX 5080 ROG Strix. Actually, no, sorry, they have changed the name. It now is the ROG Astral. Apparently they've changed the name to better reflect the price tag. All jokes aside though, this is one of the best looking RTX 5080s I've seen. And it's also by far the heaviest. Absolute chunk of this thing. So it weighs a ton. But yeah, certainly a good looking RTX 5080. And while the weight and size might seem a bit ridiculous, nah, just wait till you hear the price. And I'm gonna save that till the end. So don't skip to the end to find the price. But yeah, the price is, it's pretty spectacular. So yeah, good looking graphics card, not a great looking price. A key feature of this design is the metal housing that encases the entire graphics card. Constructed mostly from aluminium, this slab of a graphics card is extremely rigid and it needs to be because in total it weighs 2,861 grams. ASUS has minimized the amount of plastic they used here and really with the exception of the fans and a silver insert in the fan shroud, pretty much everything else has been constructed using some kind of metal. And personally, I think any graphics card selling for $1,000 US or more should do away with cheap plastic fan shrouds. So I'm pleased with what ASUS is offering here. Now, in terms of dimensions, the Astral's a big unit. As you'd expect from a high-end RTX 5080 graphics card, it measures 358 millimeters long, 150 millimeters tall, and 76 millimeters wide. So a similar height and length to that of the MSI RTX 5080 Vanguard SoC that I just finished reviewing. But this ASUS model is 15% wider, which is insane given how massive the Vanguard is. It's also quite a bit heavier than the MSI Vanguard, 47% heavier in fact. Now the length could be an issue for some cases, so make sure you check that out before buying. Most cases provide the maximum supported graphics card length in the specifications. It's also worth noting that this is yet another 4 slot graphics card that's going to place a lot of load on your PCIe slot. So helping with this, ASUS has included what they call an ROG graphics card holder. And this looks very similar to a GPU stand included with many of their GeForce 40 series cards. But whereas that previous version was made from aluminium, this newer version has been downgraded using plastic, which is pretty embarrassing really. I could somewhat understand this on an MSRP model, but the Astral, this is the Strix replacement. It's an extreme high-end graphics card. So to get a plastic GPU mount that you could buy off AliExpress for maybe a dollar is very disappointing. Anyway, this small adjustable leg magnetically attaches to your case, assuming you don't have a plastic base divider or something like that, and then it extends to support your graphics card. I think a more permanent solution that's less visible would be far better here, but assuming you have a metal surface, it's very quick and easy to install. Now getting back to the fan shroud, embedded within are three 105mm fans. The outer fans spin counterclockwise, while the centrally located fan spins clockwise, as this helps reduce turbulence, maximizing airflow. Now side on, the Astral looks amazing, and ASUS has done a great job here of integrating the GeForce RTX branding. It's very subtle. There's an LED light bar that spans the entire length of the card, and again, this looks very good. And of course, the black heatsink looks incredible, and this is the highlight of the card in my opinion, at least from this angle. Also, as you'd expect, there's a 12 pin high powered connector and ASUS is offering dual BIOS support with a performance and quiet BIOS. By default, the card runs the performance BIOS, but you can switch to the silent BIOS and this reduced the fan speed to below 1000 RPM in our testing. Around at the rear side of the card is a full aluminum backplate featuring more GeForce RTX branding, as this is a requirement from Nvidia, but again, I think it looks fine here. There are a few other details and design elements here which look quite nice, and towards the end of the card where you typically expect to see a cutout for air to flow through, ASUS has gone with a fourth fan, an exhaust fan if you will. ASUS says this boosts air pressure by up to 20%, resulting in better thermal performance, so it'll be interesting to see how it compares to other RTX 5080s that we've tested so far as they only included three fans. I should also note that ASUS cut out the backplate around the power connector, which might not look as good, but it does make installing and removing the power cable much easier. And this is something MSI didn't do with their models, and it made attaching or removing the power cable much more difficult. Something I've noticed with a lot of these new graphics cards is that the rear end, so the end opposite the I.O. panel, is starting to get some attention. 
And I suppose this is due to the fact that many modern cases now feature wraparound glass that shows off this angle of the graphics card. The Astral design here, it's very simple, giving it a clean finish. Asus has also included some mounting points here for anti-sag brackets, though sadly no such bracket was included with the graphics card. Then at the opposite end, so the I.O. end, the Astral still looks very sleek, and here we have a stainless steel I.O. bracket, which includes a trio of DisplayPort 2.1b outputs and two HDMI 2.1b outputs. So five outputs in total, four of which can be used simultaneously. Now time to take the cooler off, and this is a pretty straightforward job. In total, there's less than two dozen screws holding it together. And with the screws removed, you then need to disconnect the fan and LED cables, and this allows the aluminium fan shroud to lift off. Then you need to carefully apply some lifting pressure to the heatsink and wait for the seal created by the thermal pads to break. Doing so reveals the PCB, which measures 260 millimeters long and 145 millimeters tall, so quite a bit bigger than the other RTX 5080 and even 5090 PCBs that I've seen so far. Mounted on the PCB is a Monolithic Power Systems Multiphase MP29816 controller, along with a UPI Semi 4 Phase UP9512Q controller. The UPI Semi controller is also used to power the GDDR7 memory using three Vachet SIC 654A 50 amp power stages. As for the GPU power delivery, ASUS has gone with an additional 20 Vachet SIC 654A 50 amp power stages, providing a 20 plus 3 power stage design. Now moving over to the cooling side of things, the black heat sink weighs 1320 grams, which is lighter than what I was expecting and only accounts for 46% of the graphics card's total weight. Even so, it's still a very big heatsink that features eight 8mm thick copper heat pipes, which connect to a large copper vapor chamber. ASUS says they use an innovative design featuring milled pathways that allow the heatsink to sink into the chamber without having to flatten the heat pipes, and this was a method that MSI opted to use. They claim this maximizes contact surface and improves the thermal performance by over 10%. They also claim that the base of the chamber uses an ASUS exclusive manufacturing technique called Max Contact, which increases the surface area by 5% for improved thermal efficiency. Now attached to the vapor chamber are some aluminium blocks which help take up the space between the chamber and the memory chips, reducing the thickness of the thermal pads, so memory cooling performance should be excellent. It's also worth noting that the Astral uses a phase change thermal pad on the GPU die, which is meant to not only last longer than traditional thermal paste, but also do a better job of gap filling, providing a more efficient contact patch between the GPU die and the cooler. Beyond that though, I don't know too much about the material they've used, and with Chinese New Year this week, it's been impossible to get any info from ASUS about this product. What I can tell you is that the phase change thermal pad is a one-time use product, so if you remove the cooler as I have, you will have to remove what's left of the pad and install something else. For those of you interested, I used Thermal Grizzly's Hydronaut and found performance was identical to the ASUS phase change thermal pad. So if you do need to remove the cooler for whatever reason, restoring the original thermal performance isn't difficult. Finally, the back plate weighs 355 grams and features a number of thermal pads designed to help minimize trapped heat on the rear side of the PCB, namely behind the VRM components and memory chips. Overall, it's an impressive cooler that appears well built and therefore I expect it will cool the Astral very well, so to find out let's go over some stress test results. Here's a look at how the Astral operates after an hour of playing The Last of Us Part 1 at 4K using the maximum in-game quality settings. These temperatures were recorded in a 21 degree room installed inside an ATX case with the doors closed. Here we see that the GPU hit a peak of 62 degrees with a fan speed of 1400 RPM. We also saw the GDDR7 memory peak at 64 degrees, so these are some great results given the GPU consumed on average 335 watts, and the cores operated at 2925 MHz. Then if we switch from the performance BIOS over to the secondary silent BIOS, the fan speed drops to just 850 RPM, and now we're seeing a peak GPU temperature of 70 degrees and a peak memory temperature of 72 degrees. Now time for some overclocking. By default, the Astral has a boost clock of 2760 MHz and operates its memory at 30 gigabits per second. 
I was able to overclock the cores to 3110 megahertz and the memory to 31.6 gigabits per second. Under load, these settings allowed my Astral to reach a stable core frequency of 3,225 MHz, which resulted in an average power draw of 352 watts, while the memory ran at 31.6 gigabits per second. This increased the GPU temperature to 66 degrees and the memory to 68 degrees with an auto fan speed of 1400 RPM. Here's a quick look at how the Astral compares with MSI's Vanguard and Nvidia's FE model. Stock the Astral ran 2 degrees hotter than the Vanguard, but a degree cooler than the FE model. Then when we switch to the secondary silent bias, the Astral ran 8 degrees hotter, and this data isn't comparable to the Vanguard, as its secondary bias is the performance bias, so the biases are inverted. But if we noise normalize to 40 decibels, the Astral ran 4 degrees hotter than the Vanguard, but 3 degrees cooler than the FE model. So okay performance overall? despite falling short of what MSI achieved with the Vanguard. It seems though the fourth fan is the problem here for the Astral, making the card unnecessarily loud. As for the memory temperatures, the Astral was much cooler than the FE model, running 8 degrees cooler, but coming in 2 degrees hotter than the Vanguard. Then when we noise normalize, the Astral ends up running 6 degrees hotter than the Vanguard, but 8 degrees cooler than the FE model. Now for some gaming benchmarks, and we'll start with Dying Light 2. Out of the box, the Astral is 5% faster than the Founders Edition model, and just 1% or 1 FPS faster than MSI's Vanguard. Overclocked, we're looking at a 6% uplift, making the Astral 12% faster than the FE model. We're looking at much the same in The Last of Us Part 1. Here, the Astral was just 1 FPS faster than MSI's Vanguard, but once both models were manually overclocked, performance was identical. This meant that out of the box, the Astral was 7% faster than the FE model and 14% faster once overclocked. Interestingly, the Astral was 4% faster than the Vanguard in Delta Force, though once both graphics cards were overclocked, performance ended up being much the same, making the overclocked Astral 13% faster than the stock FE model. Lastly, we have Marvel Rivals, and here the Astral was 3% faster than the Vanguard out of the box, though once overclocked, both models delivered the same at 75 FPS. Now, when it comes to power consumption, the Astral is a hungry graphics card, sucking down 2-4% more power than the already hungry MSI Vanguard. This meant it consumed around 11% more power than Nvidia's FE model. So, as the absolute best Asus has to offer, the ROG Astral certainly does look the part, but sadly it did fall a bit short when it came to performance. Not FPS performance, mind you outside of, you know, the RTX 5080 kind of sucking, being pretty underwhelming. But that aside, the performance was good, as expected anyway, similar to other RTX 5080s. But when it came to cooling performance, it's a bit mid, if you will, running four degrees hotter than MSI's Vanguard when noise normalized, and the Vanguard isn't designed to compete with the Astral. Rather, that's a job for the Supreme, or at least we thought, because somehow the Vanguard ended up being better. Now, the Astral is by no means bad. In the silent mode, we only saw a peak GPU temperature of 70 degrees, which is perfectly acceptable given the card was virtually silent, certainly quieter than the case fans in our test system. Rather, the problem, at least for the noise normalized testing, seems to be the fourth fan, and other reviewers such as DeBauer have confirmed this. Therefore, I'm not really sure why ASUS decided to add a fourth fan and how this was all tested. Because it seems to be a waste, making the card needlessly complicated for no real benefit. I also feel like additional heatsink fins here instead of the fan, and a traditional pass-through area would have worked better. ASUS could have also made the PCB much smaller, allowing for a significantly larger pass-through area, and I feel like that would have been a better design overall. So in summary, given the size and weight, the cooling performance of the Astral was a little disappointing. But what's really disappointing, a showstopper even, is the price. The RTX 5080 in general isn't a very attractive product at $1,000 US, which is a problem because very few RTX 5080s are available at the MSRP, and the Astral certainly isn't one of them. Rather, ASUS is asking an insane $1,500 US for the Astral, making it by far the most expensive model at 50% over MSRP. The pricing here makes absolutely no sense, 
So needless to say, we don't recommend you buy it. At $1,500 US, it's just far too expensive, which is a shame because at the right price, it would be a really nice product. By the way, the MSI Vanguard version costs $1,250 US, which is still a heck of a premium, but it's also half that of the Astral. Even the Supreme is much cheaper at $1,280 US, so ASUS really needs to rethink their pricing strategy as I don't imagine their RTX 5080 range is going to sell all that well at current prices. All of that said though, so far this hasn't been an issue for ASUS as the Astral is sold out everywhere and I've been told it was one of the better supplied models. So I guess what the hell do I know? Anyway, that is going to do it for this review of the Astral RTX 5080. Let me know what you think about this thing in the comment section below. I'll be sure to read your comments. And I also have the 5090 version of the Astral. Um, so I'll probably do a review on that shortly. Uh, let me know if you want to see that. Seems like you guys are more interested in the 5090 reviews, which probably makes sense as that product's actually offering something new and not something you could pretty well buy six, 12 months ago with a, a 4080 Super. So yeah, that's kind of the 5080 in a nutshell, but there are quite a few 5080s here in the, the studio already. We have Gigabyte models, Palette, uh, I think another MSI model, possibly another Asus model. So I guess I'll review those eventually. I'll get through them because who knows, maybe these will be available and perhaps the price will improve over time. Who am I kidding? That's not going to happen. Anyway, that's it. There's the join button, Patreon, if you want more Harbor Unbox goodness. Um, signing up to either one of those will give you access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams, behind the scenes content, and Q&A stuff. So yeah, check that out if you're interested, but if not, it's perfectly fine. Of course, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again next time.